In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about calorimetry, or the equation Q equals minus MC delta T. Now, this is linked directly to enthalpy or change in enthalpy delta H. Basically, calorimetry is the process that we can use practically to measure energy changes in a reaction. Calorimetry is the process that allows us to calculate the energy or enthalpy change of a reaction by measuring temperature change. So it links the energy change to temperature change. And you can probably see up here already that delta T, the change in temperature, is involved in this equation and more about that equation in a second of course we can lump energy changes or enthalpy changes into two categories we've got exothermic reactions and we have endothermic reactions For exothermic reactions, we observe an increase in temperature. We would measure an increase in temperature in the surroundings if an exothermic reaction was taking place. What does that mean for delta H? Well, that means that delta H has a negative value. Energy has been lost from the chemical system. Of course, the opposite is true for endothermic reactions. We would observe a decrease in temperature as the thermometer shows that decrease in temperature, energy is being absorbed by the chemical system, so delta H would be positive. So how do we link this practically? How do we measure this energy change practically? Well, this is really important. The energy change of a reaction is monitored by measuring the change in temperature of a known volume of water or a solution. Now that's really, really important because of course we can't just stick a thermometer in a flame, for example, and measure the temperature of that flame. We need to be able to quantify how much energy has been released rather than just saying, well, you know, how, how much has the temperature gone up or gone down? So this is really important. So any practical that you do involving calorimetry will involve a body of water or a solution which you're measuring the temperature change of. Okay, so we're going to take an example now. Let's just say uh, quite simply burning methane. So we've got CH4 plus 2O2 gives CO2 and 2H2O. Now, Basically, this is what's going to happen. We're going to set up a very simple practical whereby we're using methane, which is basically what's coming out of the Bunsen burner, and we're going to use that to heat a known volume of water. So what we've got here is a simple setup whereby we've got what's called a calorimeter. Okay, a calorimeter. And essentially, that's just the vessel that we're using to contain our liquid. Now, a calorimeter tends to be very insulated to prevent any heat loss. Okay, there's a, a very expensive and posh one called a bomb calorimeter. We don't need to know too much about that, but, but we do need to know that we need to minimize heat loss. And the vessel is known as a calorimeter. We've got a known volume of water. So what I'm going to say is here we've got 100 centimeters cubed of water. And of course, this heat is being generated by the combustion of methane. So the reaction that's going on up here. So CH4 plus 2O2. So basically just straight out of the Bunsen burner. Of course, very importantly here, we have our thermometer. Now, because we're measuring delta T change in temperature, we need to note the starting temperature of our water, really important. And of course, the final temperature of our water, all right? So that's the change in temperature, the difference in temperature. So this is how we'd set up an experiment. There are various different ways this can happen, okay? There are different variations of this, but essentially you're gonna have some water, you've gotta know the volume, and you've gotta measure the temperature change, okay? Those are the fundamental parts of this. So let's say I did this, let's say I heated this water up using methane, and I observed an increase in temperature 
of 25 degrees Celsius. So essentially that is our delta T, okay? So that was the increase in temperature that we saw. How do we use this equation to find the energy change? Well, this is where I'm gonna go into our Q equals minus MC delta T, or otherwise known as minus MCAT. Okay, so Q equals minus MCAT. So what do all these different values stand for? So first of all, we've got energy change. This is what we're calculating, of course, and that's Q. M is the mass of water or solution that you're dealing with, okay? Now, sometimes you will be using a solid, maybe you're uh, burning a solid or whether you're reacting a solid in aqueous solution, it is not the mass of the solid, it is the mass of the solution that you're heating up. Basically, we'll know the volume, but I mean, different solutions have different densities, but essentially one centimeter cubed of any solution equals one gram. We'll always take it as this, okay? They may even specify that in the question, but you know, even if it doesn't assume that. So every centimeter cubed equals a gram. So of course, 100 centimeter cubed here, that's gonna be 100 grams. The one thing that never changes is C. This is our specific heat capacity of water which has a value of 4.18, and they'll give you this in the exam. You don't need to remember this number. 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. Basically, what we're saying here is it takes 4.18 joules of energy to heat one gram of solution by one Kelvin or one degree Celsius. Okay, so that is basically the magic number that needs to be in the middle of this equation. And of course, as we've said previously, change in temperature measured in degrees C or Kelvin. Now it doesn't matter whether it's degrees C or Kelvin because, okay, 273 Kelvin is zero degrees Celsius, but they are equal. So as you go up by one Kelvin, it goes up by one degree. So it doesn't matter which uh, units you're using here because it's a difference, okay? So it doesn't matter there. So we've got our energy change equals minus mass of water multiplied by specific heat capacity, multiplied by change in temperature. So let's take a look and see how we work out what we've done here, all right? So as I said, the energy change here, Q, that's gonna equal minus M. Now our mass of water is 100 because we have 100 centimeters cubed. Multiply by the magic number 4.18 is our specific heat capacity. And of course, our change in temperature I stated before was 25 degrees Celsius, okay? I've put that into a calculator already. And what we have here is minus 10450 joules. Now our answer is in joules, really, really important because of this specific heat capacity being in joules, okay? So this is basically 10,450 joules, or indeed we can divide that by a thousand to get minus 10.45 kilojoules, okay? So usually they would want the answer in kilojoules there. So this is how much energy it took to heat 100 centimeter cubed of water by 25 degrees Celsius. Essentially, that's how much energy our methane reacting with oxygen released to cause that increase in temperature. Now, the other thing I'm gonna point out here is this is a negative number. You may see this equation without the minus here, okay? That's perfectly acceptable, but I tend to remember this one because it not only gives you energy change, but enthalpy change. It helps you look at what's happened to the enthalpy in this reaction. As we set up here, an increase in temperature which we had an increase of 25 degrees, gives you a negative delta H. Indeed, if we saw a decrease in temperature, this negative number here would actually correspond with the negative delta T. If temperature went down, this would be minus delta T for an endothermic reaction. So this minus here, and if we had a minus here for a decrease in temperature, would cancel each other out and give us a positive delta H. Okay, so that's why I put the minus in there because it's all about enthalpy.
Now, speaking of enthalpy, we know enthalpy to be delta H. Now, this is not delta H because delta H is always given in kilojoules per mole. So we need to take into account the number of moles of reactant in this equation, okay, in this reactant. To find delta H from Q, the energy change, what we need to do is take the energy change and divide it by the number of moles of reactant that we're bothered about. In this case, it's probably methane. Okay, so to find delta H, we need to find the number of moles of methane used. Now, we didn't measure this. We just used a Bunsen burner and we didn't measure the mass of the methane that we actually burned. Okay, so we don't have that uh, value, so we can't do that here. In the next couple of tutorials, I'll run through a couple of examples on this. So really importantly, so you can only find delta H from Q if you know the number of moles involved, i.e. maybe you've got a mass or maybe you've got a concentration and volume if you're dealing with a solution, you can find the number of moles that way. But either way, somehow you've got to find the number of moles if you're going to find delta H, okay? So overall, using calorimetry, it involves Q equals minus MCAT. That process allows us to calculate the energy change of a reaction by measuring temperature change. And don't forget these relationships, really, really important. So we need to use a known volume of water or solution, a known body of water that we're heating up with the reaction or indeed cooling down in that reaction, depending on whether it's exo or endothermic, okay? So any kind of setup that involves water, you can use calorimetry for. Q equals minus MCAT, know what these things are. You're gonna be reminded of this in a case of just putting your numbers in and getting your answer in joules. And of course then we can convert that into a delta H for the reaction if we know the number of moles. So that's calorimetry.